While the state of Washington is grappling with the issues involved in the, passing the new law, enacting the law that allows and legalizes same-sex marriage, they are going to have to deal with these host of, of subsequent or consequent issues relating to violations of one's conscience. Should business owners be forced to serve or cater or perform publicly at an event which is completely against the dictates of their conscience according to their faith? So if they do not believe in supporting the public ceremony of marriage between uh, two members of the same sex, uh, male, male, female, female, um, should they be required to anyway? Um, that would certainly be unprecedented to require one to um, violate one's conscience, to abridge religious freedom in order to serve a small minority um, in an area. Um, it's not so much about the um, same sex partners being in the minority as it is their, um, their, their state requirement that one go against one's conscience in order to serve that minority in a particular fashion, namely a public wedding ceremony. Just for the moment, for the sake of argument, let us propose that the Attorney General in Washington is able to effectively make her case and demonstrate that in fact the proprietors of Arlene's Flowers were not merely going against their, their the dictates of their conscience to uh, cater to a public event such as a wedding between uh, same-sex partners, but that they were specifically discriminating against a person, a customer, based on their sexual orientation or their sexual lifestyle. If that case were made, we would still have the larger issue of should we allow one or actually force one, a business owner, to violate their conscience in order to serve someone else whom they believe to, um, whom, they, whom they cannot serve in good conscience. In good faith, they cannot serve or support um, this person based on their sexual orientation. So even if the, the state attorney general makes her case without any flaws and the defense is, is unable to show uh, what, was, what seems to have been going on, because again there was a long-standing business relationship between um, one of the male homosexuals and the business owner, so it seems like it's going to be difficult. But even, even given that um, difficult case ahead of that attorney general, would that not still raise the problem of is it right to force a business owner to serve clients against their own conscience? And that, I think, has to be weighed a little bit more heavily um, and, and probably hasn't been discussed enough in the media at this point. One writer slash philosopher who best exemplifies the conflict between trying to legalize same-sex marriage and have a democratic society, a society where you can have political liberalism tolerance for a variety, a diversity of viewpoints, um, and yet allow freedom of conscience. Uh, one writer, one such writer would be Francis Beckwith. Let's take a look at his argument, which I'll call the PLA, the political liberalism argument against same-sex marriage. Essentially, Beckwith is arguing that in order to have a, um, a society with political liberalism, where this diversity of viewpoints, sometimes radically different, um, but still being part of one's worldview, part of, part of the well, an essential ingredient in such a society um, is the ability to follow the dictates of your conscience. So a society with political liberalism will allow observers, uh, religious people, to observe their conscience, plain and simple. Now, the recent events have shown that legalization of same-sex marriage causes a significant impact in this regard. It does not 
um, allow for the flourishing of political liberalism. So the PLA, the politi political liberalism argument, um, indicates that there needs to be that um, an allowance or a toleration of a diversity of viewpoints on a number of subjects. Um, and this legalization of same-sex marriage does pass that test. However, the second test where uh, such diversity of uh, different um, viewpoints, opinions, beliefs, um, matters of conscience, when those items are um, are not allowing um, or are curbing um, expression of religious freedom and the observance of the dictates of one's conscience, um, then at that point um, the legalization of same-sex marriage is, is essentially uh, violating uh, political liberalism. So it, it allows for the diversity. Same-sex marriage will seem to increase diversity um, uh, of opinion but at the same time, it um, does not uh, follow uh, and it does not appear to allow the uh, practice of one's religious conviction or the, um, the observance of one's conscience. The argument from uh, political liberalism, uh, the PLA, the political liberalism argument against same-sex marriage uh, proposed by uh, Dr. Francis Beckwith of Baylor University is one that is worth exploring um, in connection uh, with um, not only Arlene's flowers but other cases in which um, there may be discrimination against those who are sincerely holding to the beliefs or the convictions of their conscience of their moral their internal moral guide now the Beckwith political liberalism argument um, moves from the uh, a society which espouses political liberalism and in which it, it specifically in the sense that it tolerates um, and encourages a a variety a diversity of opinion and belief and the legalization of same-sex marriage does actually meet this component of political liberalism but in the second component of political liberalism um, the legalization of same-sex marriage fails the test. Um, this is the test where um, individuals in society are um, able to disagree politely with someone else's cherished conviction or belief uh, without discrimination. Uh, so they are able to follow the dictates of their conscience without being discriminated against by other members of society. Now, uh, the reason why legalization of same-sex marriage does not meet this criterion or this test um, is clearly borne out, amply borne out, in the Arlene, Arlene's Flowers uh, situation. Um, the uh, couple who owns the store is um, unable to refuse service to someone based on uh, their conviction in their conscience. So they are being asked to violate their conscience in order to accommodate um, someone who is um, who is asking for their services so they don't they don't have an equal right to deny service to one of their customers um, again this um, but but there are certainly objections let's just just take a quick look at one objection to this well one one person might say you know that's all fine and dandy but the political liberal, liberalism art, uh, argument suffers from some problems one of which is that um, let's say that we mandate Sharia law for all of society well um, the legalization of same-sex marriage is not really like um, mandating Sharia law for one thing mandating Sharia law for all women that they would be required to wear the veil the the punjib um, outside of the home or in public um, would not uh, would not meet the first test which is the encouragement of a diver, a diver excuse me a diversity of practice or belief so that 
that component of political liberalism it would fail. The second and the second test of political liberalism would also um, would would also really be failed in this case as well because um, some people, um, according to their sincerely held belief in their conscience, they would be violating their conscience by veiling themselves uh, when going out of doors. So in the case of Sharia, neither Sharia law nor the legalization of same-sex marriage really passes um, the test of, of a society which, um, which adopts, espouses uh, political liberalism. So Francis Beckwith's PLA, political liberalism, liberalism argument, does um, counteract the, um, the desire to change the, def the definition of marriage and legalize uh, same-sex marriage as well as um, mandate some sort of Sharia law uh, uh, for, um, for women. Thank you for uh, listening, and I look forward to some uh, really active discussion 